the sea and the waves roaring is still the nations he's talking about. But people is like, yo, you see the weather pattern changing? Oh, a whole bunch of hurricanes. Them hurricanes been there forever. Hurricanes ain't new. The hurricanes in America been there since the Africans and the Chinese and them was visiting America uh, 2,000 years before Columbus ever came over here. People been blown across the Atlantic by accident long ago because they got caught up in, <laughs> in tornado patterns. The tornadoes, do everybody know where the tornadoes start? They start on the, on the west coast of Africa near the southern tip and they come across the Atlantic Ocean and they come past the islands called Bermuda, Jamaica, uh, Haiti, Cuba, all of that and they come up this they come up the coast along South America and then coming into the Gulf of Mexico and you got it's been like that forever. That's why slave ships followed the pattern. They couldn't help it. Once you get on the water on the west coast of Africa, you coming over here. You're coming. Goodness. Oh, you see the weather pattern change? Who told you the weather pattern change? Who said that? Mike Syka said that? Don Paul said that. It was Don Paul. For those of y'all who are not in Buffalo, those are local meteorologists. Y'all can just replace the names of y'all own neck of the woods. Oh, yeah, Al Gore. Oh, yeah, Al Gore. Now, you know what I'm saying? Oh, the weather pattern. See, he said the sea and the waves was roaring. Man, that's the wicked on the earth among the nations, bringing the nations to the perplexity that's distressing them. But let's go. Let's get out of here, y'all. I want y'all to go home because the Sabbath is technically over, according to the sky. Isaiah 60, 1 through 5, and we got one more text. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall... Rise, arise upon thee Amen. and his glory shall be seen upon thee and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and the kings to the brightness of thy rising so he's talking about Jerusalem and his people right yes okay go ahead lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together they come to thee thy sons shall come from afar and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side then thou shalt see and flow together and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. <laughs> the force of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. What the sea? What are you talking about? A whole bunch of fish? No, nations. The, what, what is the abundance of the sea that's converted? The nations. He told Israel, look, they're going to nurse you. They're going to come to you together when they see that you are back with the Most High and the abundance of the sea shall be converted to you. The forces of the Gentiles shall come to you. The abundance of the sea is the forces of the Gentiles. The sea is the nations, brothers and sisters, and in particular, they've been represented in the visions that the men of God have seen as, the, as being responsible for the beasts that have come upon the earth. And what I believe from reading the prophets, and you can agree or disagree, everyone has to walk as he or she is convinced. I believe them, him seeing no more sea and that new heaven and new earth represented there being no more, there being no more united nations that can bring forth governments that can go against the government that is established in the new heaven and the new earth. That's why there was no more sea. As far as I see, the sea represented the nations without God. And they bring forth governments and kingdoms that are apostate, that are evil, and destroy man from his purpose. But when the new heaven and the new earth is created, you won't see that sea no more. Because the nations won't be together in that manner no more. They're going to be together in the mindset of God. They will no longer be together in a mindset as a sea that bring forth these beasts to challenge the government of God. And when Satan tried it after the thousand years, it let us know that's going to be cut off quick. No, that's not going to happen. The nations will not be... There is... You know why that ain't going to happen? Because didn't I say it wasn't going to be no more sea? 
Just think about it. I could be out my cotton picking. But I think I'm in my right one. Praise the Most High, if it's the truth. Let us go to the last text, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 24 through 28. And I'm so appreciative that everyone decided to stay. I don't know who all was online, but I hope everyone who started with us stayed on too. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 24 through 28. I know we'll get some backlash, but it don't look like we worried, do it? It don't look like we worried about it. I mean, whatever. Let this be put out to the four winds so that people can be shown what may what the truth is and if there's anything that the most high want us to know he gonna let us know and I pray we in the right mindset to accept truth no matter what we sat up here and said Isaiah 15 go ahead brother 24 through I mean 1 Corinthians 15 20, and, bro, thank you for your extensive no problem. reading today <laughs> go ahead 1 Corinthians 24 to 28 yeah, chapter 15, verse 24 to 28. Okay. Then comes the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. The only thing that wasn't under the feet of the Son was the Father who gave him all things. Exactly. Go ahead. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subjected unto him that put all things under him. Right. That God may be all in all. Now, praise the Lord. When when it is all finished, and he shall have delivered up the kingdom to who? The Father. Right. Did it say his kingdom was over and the father destroyed everything and it's a new kingdom the father bringing from out the sky that ain't what that said whatever the son ruled over and established as the kingdom of God it said the, fa the son handed it over to the father father everything you want it done is done now I step back under you and you will be glorified forever. And the father sit over what he had his son build. Where is the other thing coming out the sky and getting rid of everything Jesus did? Where is that in the prophets? It, it, it ain't there. So I am going to say, I'm convinced that doctrine and that teaching is an error. And I hope that the people who teaching it can accept that it's an error. Whether they are the servants of God or not is not my call. I believe they just may be wrong on this issue. I hope if any of them or their pupils see this and hear it, that they will say, hold on. You know what? Some of that stuff he's saying makes some sense. Or might just want to argue. And I ain't entertaining the arguments. Our rule is one, two, at the most three times, we'll deal with anybody about anything. Mm -hmm. And after there is no agreeance after the third time, we leave that people alone with that topic. You don't believe it then. Let it go. Why are we going to talk for the next five years about it? You don't believe it. I can't hate you. I can't grow a hate for you. I'm going to leave you alone on that subject matter. Maybe we'll talk about something else somewhere down the line, but it's clear we don't agree. After the first and second admonition, deal with anybody in any matter like they just don't, we don't agree on that. So brothers and sisters, I hope we understand what John saw when he saw a new heaven and a new earth. And there was no more sin. I thank y'all for y'all time.